So today we have with us Balaji, Mr. Balaji Thiruvengadam, CTO EVC Ventures. Hello, sir. Hey. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Yeah. Sir, so let's start this video interview. Sure. Yeah. So, what industries will the blockchain disrupt in future? So, the looking at the trend, you know, of um, the blockchain technology evolution and uh, the industry traction, it looks like. I mean, it's not one or two, it's more of, uh, you know, about 19 sectors or industries the blockchain can kind of influence or disrupt the way they do. So the major part is, uh, you know, banking and payments, right? And then the second is the cyber security that you look at and then uh, supply chain, uh, higher education and uh, IoT, right? It's more of... Um, so uh, it, it's it's not. I mean, uh, it's no longer we relate blockchain to only Bitcoin, right? It's more about uh, it's a, a kind of secure ledger, right? So where um, you integrate, um, uh, you know, different pieces of moving parts, right, in the industry. I think it's. I think uh, the kind of research and uh, the trend that looks, uh, you know, today is about. It is covering 19 <coughs> industries. Yeah. So, is blockchain a fad or a revolutionary technology? It is a revolutionary technology. Is what I, I mean, uh, I would think. Uh, you know, um, see, uh, what what is more important, uh, you know, in the business is all about trust, right? I mean, that's not just today. And uh, I mean, even when there are there were no technology, at least there was. Uh, you know, uh, trust that was established between two parties and then business was happening. When we move towards global commerce, right, so globalization of commerce and then the trust become more relevant because you're not seeing each other. You know, two parties who are, who are working on, who are into the business, not able to see themselves each other. And there are a lot of intermediaries, right, to support this global commerce business came in like banks, you know, and then bank kind of supporting letter of credit, guarantee, all of that, right? But the pace in which things are moving, I mean, many individuals like us is doing wire transfer, yeah. right? So there is a, there are a lot of wire transfer that are happening when you just talk about payments. And there are a lot of transactional data across system is happening. So what is more important for the conduciveness of business is protected, trust, secured model right of two parties working on the business so blockchain can be looked at in that front so which means that it's going to give us a revolutionary stuff because it's going to avoid any uh, kind of uh, you know tamper uh, you know to the whole uh, transactional part and uh, and it, it can be applied everywhere right so that's that's where i mean uh, it has to be looked at a revolutionary because it is very relevant for uh, today's context of uh, you know everything going global and then uh, uh, the speed in which we want to operate right on the business uh, so i would say uh, it is revolutionary yeah so there's this plethora of data uh, floating over there here and there so is it safe to say that blockchain is that reliable to adapt see um, i mean the every data set Right, because um, blockchain kind of is based out of uh, you know crypto. It has got a lot of uh, cryptic parts involved, right? And uh, every ledger, the transaction in every ledger, is been uh, you know uh, added with uh, some crypt, uh, crypto uh, to uh, identify uniquely, as well as link between uh, you know two transactions of the ledger, right? So, um, so the model in which working with the blockchain ledger, if that is rightly done and the data that is there in the blockchain is protected, right? And it is, uh, it's not uh, somebody, I mean, it is available to everybody, but uh, it is available to the authenticated guys, right? So, yeah. so I mean, it, it's about how well somebody is going to use it and rightly and to protect the data and that's that's going to really uh, you know make a difference in terms of how secure the data content sitting there 
So what is the major limitation of blockchain technology? Uh, today, if you look at, I mean, um, we have been talking quite a lot of, uh, you know, um, a lot about uh, blockchains and uh, we have not had a lot of series of, uh, you know, product use cases, uh, you know, developed yet. And uh, it may, it is, it may be uh, too early. So, because when you look at limitation, as a technology, it, it, it has specific purpose to solve. Yeah. Right. So then uh, I, as a, you know, uh, executive always look at when you apply that to a business case, what, you know, business problem it is solving, you know, what are the limitations that is bringing that this technology bringing to the business. Yeah. Right. If you take blockchain technology as a separate uh, piece. Uh, so for the business use case that it is, uh, you know, trying to solve today, be it in a Bitcoin kind of world. Uh, I mean, there is not series of uh, limitation. So the limitation actually will come through, right? So when we start applying that to different business use cases, and then you will see, and then it is probably it'll take its own journey, right? Because uh, it is still early, and then it will get uh, kind of uh, argumented uh, more with time, and it's all more about you know we'll have to start using that more. So how can AI and blockchain coexist? <clears throat> I think, um, okay, so as far as artificial intelligence concerned, right, it has got two major parts to it. One is on the computer vision side of the house, so the other one is the machine learning yeah. uh, with respect to, right, so the machine learning then further drill down to deep learning, yeah, all of that, right. And uh, so there are various use cases, uh, you know, we are trying to use artificial intelligence, you know, uh, basic uh, business flow automations starts with. And then, um, you know, like to humanoid, right? So yeah. uh, manipulating human. And with respect to blockchain and uh, AI, I think it's a, it's a very nice uh, way of thinking. I mean, this question is also, right? So, um, see the idea is, I mean, blockchain, uh, you know, you're using identity protect yeah. for the blockchain, right? So one, today, the learnings that we have, uh, you know, so these learnings of every specific problem or vertical, you take a basic exam example of uh, contextual chart bots. Okay, bots today is trying to learn, you might come across, uh, you know, in a day to day life, right? So today there is no support line, right? If you order a food and it takes you to a bot, bot is answering, you know, food is coming, not yeah. coming, right? Chasing, yeah. all yeah. of that, right? Uh, so with there we're trying to do a kind of contextual understanding of what we're trying to solve and each of these implemented right of uh, ai implementation which has got learnings about specific problems they are sitting at their desk yes. yeah right so it is it is their proprietary learning yeah. so if you have to take the artificial intelligence the learning uh, you know uh, these product have to a global model of you know not every other company is trying to venture in the same space, trying to solve the same yeah. space for the human uh, mankind, right? That can be resolved because it can be into a global ledger and we can see how do we condense uh, the learning set of a data, you know, into a global ledger and how do we distribute that across, right? So, I mean, have you know many people use it to solve, solve their problems right so i think it's a very interesting stuff i mean uh, it should uh, it should parallelly move forward as well <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you so much sir for sharing your insights with us it's uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here